What up, players? Warbots Tay back up in this mug. <laughs> Man, I am just really going at it, pumping out these videos. Because I've been working so hard on the studio, haven't really done many updates and uh, nothing really for myself, just knocking out these commissions, just hitting the ground running. Hey, speaking of running, check this out. You've got two American GIs here, World War II, um, and I think, I believe they're for a kind of alternate reality kind of horror, sci-fi, World War II game. I say that because I'm not sure what range these guys are from. They were included in, in a commission of mine, and um, they're just miscellaneous World War II figures. And they came with two zombie Nazi figures that we're going to take a look at. But these guys are true blue American, red-blooded American guys, not zombies, heading into the fight. You've got your sergeant here. I'm going to think he's a sergeant because he's got a Tommy gun. And he is like signaling the men forward and he's rushing forward, kind of like uh, leading the way. And you've got a rifleman here in the back. It looks like he's got a scope on his rifle that looks like a sniper. So he might be a sniper. That'd be pretty cool. Love Saving Private Ryan. One of my favorite movies when I was growing up. Okay, so I think the, I found a great way of doing American uniforms, American fatigues from World War II, this olive drab. Castellan Green is my base coat, shaded with Agrax Earthshade, highlighted back up with Castellan Green, adding just a touch of Carrick Stone to create some nice, uh, I guess you would call them drab highlights, and just really, really good effect on, on the uniforms there. The packs and the canteen cover, the boots, are done with Mornfang Brown. And also the stock or the wood of the rifle is done in Mornfang Brown, shaded again with Agrax Earthshade. So you could really do the uniforms and the boots and the weapons. The steel is just bolt gun metal or lead belcher rather. And then wash it all with Agrax Earthshade, highlight it back up, then paint on the skin. For the skin, I did Bugman's Glow, shaded with Raikland Flesh Shade, highlighted back up with Cadian Flesh Tone. Very simple, the standard skin recipe. Uh, three steps, these are just done at a war boss standard, but you can tell that they look pretty good, I think. Very good for quality for a tabletop. I picked up some highlights. Uh, you can see the light reflecting off of the folds in the pants on the fatigue. The fatigues for the uh, the rifleman there. Just adding in a little bit of that Carrick Stone to create some nice highlights on the folds. And, uh, oh yeah, here's, here's a great little happy circumstance. You notice for the sergeant, he's got, he's bearing his uh, pearly white choppers there. And all I did for that was I painted his mouth with Abaddon Black. And then I saw he had teeth, so I got my Vallejo white, and I took a very small amount on the tip of my brush. I turned the model up at an angle to get to the teeth, and when I did that, the brush bristles of the brush were coming up, and they only touched the bottom of his his teeth there. So it create it created a line of black black paint between his upper lip and the teeth, and it's just a very naturally a very cool looking effect, and I am so. I don't know why I'm so stoked when I see it. I think it just looks really cool. Probably because it was just a lucky occurrence that I don't think I would be able to recreate, but without a lot of time and patience and hard work. But sometimes everything just falls into place. Speaking of things that just fall into place, let's take a look at some spooky zombie Nazis. So our first guy here is a rifleman, I guess you could say. And uh, I painted his uniform in... I guess Flames of War has this new paint range, and they're really cool. They come in bottles shaped like dropper bottles, like Vallejo's, but they have these, I guess, bullet tops, caps. They look really, really cool. They look, each paint bottle looks like a little bullet. And um, the German infantry one, really, really great. The base coat is called Grenadier Green, and it's this kind of faded gray green. When you put it next to the American, the American's uniform looks a lot more like a standard green drab and the uh, German uniform is is a lot more of that faded gray look to it so instead of mixing different colors for Citadel or using uh, just having way so way too much in my opinion options way too many options from the Vallejo range uh, if, if you're not sure what that uniform color is 
um, there's just a wealth. There's so many different tones and, sh and colors and shades in the Vallejo range. So if you want to just get in there and start painting your uniforms, uh, Flames of War has the German Infantry Pack, which contains this Grenadier Green. It, create, it has the uh, darker green for the helmet and um, just a lot of good colors if, if you're going to be painting World War II German uniforms. All right, back to the model there. I said he was a zombie. You can kind of tell because he's got a bloody right hand. It's it's kind of messed up, so I decided to give him some, some blood there, blood effects. His right side of his face is a little sunken in, very ghoulish, like the eyes are sunken in like Michael Jackson in Thriller when he turns into a zombie monster. But the most obvious reason to think that he is no longer of this earth is because the back of the model is all jacked up and when I saw the model first I thought it was just like a fault in the casting like there were just weird it his uniform in the entire left side of the back of his body is all torn away and the, the model just looked like like hamburger so I thought oh he's a zombie I have to zombify him up it's not just a really bad casting job so I thought how am I gonna do this and there were a bunch of different options I had in, in my head but in the end I decided to make it look like he was caught in an explosion and the reason why is because I first I thought it could be like a chemical like a, a, a flamethrower or something that just happened to his body but then I saw on his face as well the left side of his face was all hamburger looking and uh, when you see that the right side of his face is very clean in comparison it's just zombie looking the left side is just like pulped meat i decided to make it look like he was on the wrong end of a blast the way i did that was basically just pr after i primed the model and did the uniform and everything else i left the I guess the the damage there, I left it blank and then I just went in with Tamiya Clear Red from the Tamiya paint, paint line, the paint range. Tamiya Clear Red, fantastic blood color. Mix it up with some Abaddon Black and some Rhinox Hide to give it some like dark tones and when you paint it on, it'll go on nice and thick. It dries glossy or shiny. And so when you look at the model, it looks like coagulated blood. It's not bright red. It's a very dark and uh, just nasty, nasty looking wound. So let's get in there and really take a look at it because that is awesome. There you go. Ugh. So I had a lot of fun. And yeah, like I said, the left side of his face is all messed up as well, which is why I decided to paint some to me a clear red on that. His right hand is <clears throat> a little bit of, uh, got a little bit of that that as well. But to do the, the pale flesh tone, basically did Rackarth flesh, shaded with known oil. You don't really want, like the, the fingers of his left hand also has that. You don't really want there to be warm skin tones when you're doing flesh. So uh, rotted flesh. So just, yeah, Rackarth flesh with some known oil. I was able to get the eyeball on his right, the right side of his face because... Uh, when you put some Abaddon Black into that sunken hollow of his eye, where his eye would be, I found a nice little spot to get a, a white dot of paint, and then holding the model vertically, doing a vertical slash with black, creates a very, very creepy ghoul-like ghoul effect. And one more time. There he is from the back, all messed up. Ooh, really creepy looking. And the final model I want to show you is this officer. This German officer slash zombie. He's got a couple bullet holes in him, so we know that it's not just he woke up on the wrong side of the bed and he's very old and wrinkly. He is a zombie. His flesh is all withering, and I decided when I was painting his uniform, because I know I wanted it to be like a black officer's uniform, I decided to highlight up with Dark Reaper and then Rust Gray. It creates a very rich looking blue-black, very similar to my Space Marine, my Blood Angels Terminator Captain. Now, in order to create some, I guess, variation in the black, I decided to do his boots as a glossy black highlighted with white so that it could also match the, the hat. The lining on the hat is white, pure white, and uh, the boots were 
both the hat and the boots have a an application of art coat. The brim of the hat has some art coat and the boots have some art coat to make them a little bit glossy. And um, I want to show you also for the AE World War II range, uh, 